Right, hi guys, as you can see, um, out of the RX10 Mark IV, and it's just a kind of mess around, have a bit of a play, but typical, really windy again. Um, so anyway, I've plugged in my recorder, HDMI recorder, so you can see what the autofocus points are doing. And it's just interesting to see and kind of think about how good is autofocus system sort of three years down the line um, compared to the up-to-date stuff. Now, obviously I can't compare it side by side at the moment, but just looking at how quickly it actually focuses onto stuff, you know, is very good. Um, I've never really missed much, um, you know, but you've just got to make sure you use the right autofocus points for what you need at the time. So obviously I was shooting um, center focus there. Um, here's a quick loop of slow motion video. So I've just uh, clicked it to um, basically loop now and then Basically, once I've got what I want to see, I then push record, and then it records the clip, which you can see there. And you get a preview of the uh, um, the video there. Um, the only thing with the HFR mode or the slow motion mode is the autofocus seems very slow on it. So sometimes you have to back out. Sort of, if you're at 600 mil or something, and it won't focus very easily, you have to back out sort of, sort of 300 or something for it to get the the focus point pretty quickly. Um, anyway, but as you can see here, moving around, messing around with different uh, focus systems, as in like the lock-on, uh, AF lock-on. So as you can see there, it's now following the boat as much as it can. It does pretty well. Every now and again, it just uh, you know wanders off. But here's a here's a good example of why using different autofocus points works for certain situations. Really, really windy. There's a ladybird sat down on the right-hand side there. You can just about see the red. Um, and I'm just changing my focus points now so I can basically get what I want to see. So now I've gone for center, which you'll see in a second, actually locks straight onto the ladybird and just hangs on it because I'm roughly in that area all the time. But as you can see there, if I move off, off center slightly, it tries to hunt and it just can't do it. But I am also pretty much at the focal limit as well, so it hasn't got much leeway for um, mistakes there. But, um, you know, it, it does rather, rather well. Um, as you can see there, it's not got a problem really focusing at all. But you know, you considering you've got leaves either side which are closer or further away. Um, as you can see, that doesn't work on center spot very well because obviously it's such a small focus point. As soon as it moves out of shot, it's trying to hunt and it's trying to focus on something. So go back to the center where you've got a bit more leeway of movement, and it's absolutely bang on. So that works really, really well. Um, as you can see, the targeting one or lock on AF kind of works. Um, and that's every time you see a flicker, that's me actually taking a photo or a burst of photos. Um, so but anyway, um, there you go. That's one of the shots there. So probably 10, 15 years ago, you would have struggled to get a shot like that because the autofocus systems weren't as fast as they are now. Um, and there's two shots of the ladybird. One's a little bit sharper than the other. Well, I say sharper. One's focused very slightly behind the head. Um, I anyway, walked uh, back down to the car, and on the other side of this uh, reeds and grass here, there's some actually some uh, wild ducks just uh, chilling in the sun. So I've got a few shots of those, um, trying out the eye autofocus. So go into FN button and then into the uh, animal uh, AF, and then changing to wide because it's basically going to cover the whole, you know, as much autofocus area as possible to track the eye of the duck. So Here's, uh, here's just showing it at work, so there you go, sort of straight on, even though it's just chilling, <laughs> has got his eye open. It's not always bang on the eye, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, and, uh, you know, it just works on the fact that, obviously, it's the algorithms and everything. I mean, I went to the zoo last week, and the IAF on the animals on the A7R4 probably did 40 different species quite happily but it's almost like it learnt the first few seconds it was on it um, and then eventually it, it picked the eye so it's almost like it's learning uh, as it goes but uh, there you go so that one's picked up a face or an eye, an eye somewhere but it can't work out 100% but it's obviously realized one's there because it's keep shut opening closing its eyes so um, it didn't go down so small but here's some of the shots here anyway I mean nothing too extravagant but you know just just shows you what's really going on um, and the kind of the settings I'm using, I'm using fully manual, um, 
and uh, just adjusting on the fly, you know, uh, making sure my shutter speed is fast enough, especially because it's really windy and I'm getting buffeted about, you know, and obviously the certain animals are moving very quickly. But like with the ducks, they were just sat there, so no real drama. But as you can see, I was shooting through grasses. So um, here's another example of the autofocus working pretty well. I'm trying to stay with the bird. And flying these all over the place. I'm not actually using the viewfinder here, as I was actually using the back screen that, um, of the recorder, so it was a little bit difficult to actually uh, frame the shot up as easy as I would do normally. Um, so that's why I was kind of a bit off with uh, the bird there. But as you can see here, just changing to different uh, autofocus settings, but obviously you can't use the auto the the AF lock on when you've got it in animal mode. Works with human, but I just turn it off. There you go. So then you go um, to AF lock on wide, and then it should track this um, thistle here. Um, but it was really, really windy, really, really windy. So it had, I mean, considering it's you know being buffed around all over the place, it's still tracking it pretty well. Um, so I was that's pretty impressive. I was quite quite impressed with that. Um, I'm not holding the camera particularly still. I'm holding it with two hands, but looking away from, holding it away from my body as well. So not like up to the eye where you can keep it stibier. Um, but like I say, even zooming at 600 and then backing out a bit, you know, it's hanging on really, really well. Even though you know it gets blasted off out to the side completely, even if it focuses on the grass in the distance, it's straight back on it. You know, very, very quickly. So you don't really miss much, which is really, really good. Um, and I think that's where Sony led the uh, the AF. Um, situation for quite a few years now. Um, obviously, Canon and Nikon and everything have still got their very good systems um, on the DSLRs and obviously the newer, newer mirrorlesses as well. Um, but anyway, it's your choice, whichever you want to buy. You know, I don't. I'm not a brand lover. Um, I just use what works for me. End of the day. So, um, and I know the Sony systems inside and out. So why would I change if I'm happy with them? You know, it's all cool. There you go. So that's one of the thistle shots um, there. Nice and sharp, and another shot there. Nice and sharp. There are a couple that are a little bit of motion blur, but that's just down to the um, obviously it moving very quickly, and probably me moving as well. Um, back down on the beach for a moment. So lovely day, but I say, say, I mean, I was out with the drone earlier in the morning, and it was I think it was two miles an hour wind. By the time it got to about now, which was I think. Uh, Sort of 1.30, p.m., something like that. It was pretty windy, sort of 20 mile hour winds. So, um, you know, but here's a couple of the old sea, uh, wading birds, I think they are. Um, so that was pretty cool. And utilizing your, you've got your little thumb up by your shutter button, you've got your zoom in and out uh, lever there. But obviously, you've got your um, obviously zoom ring as well. So, Utilizing the zoom ring, if you set it to fast in the settings in the menu, um, your um, on photo it's the same. So if you've got if you're taking photos, you can zoom in and out at the same speed on um, in it, with the wheel or the lever. But if you if you're shooting video, you can actually um, on the lever the lever um, zoom becomes. Uh, slower and then obviously your the ring on the lens is actually faster here's um basically just a um that was what i just watched them what they were doing they were fishing um these seagulls here were, were basically fishing so they were diving in um which was quite interesting to see um and that was a 24 frames per second uh, burst there so with the 24 frames per second bursting obviously if something's flying at you like a bird it's not going to get the uh uh, 24 frames per second, probably like 18 to 20. But if something's panning with you, you're probably going to get the 24. So that's really, really cool. Um, a couple of other shots here. Uh, next one coming up is just a, or a just a little tip here. If you're down the beach and you've got a lot of water or in a lake or something like that, try and keep your horizons level. So this shot here, um, level, but as you can see, I was actually slightly out, so I've actually rotated it so it's dead flat, um, you know, horizontal. Um, water always flows level. Or vertical, depending if it's a waterfall or whatever. So, um, you know, for shots like this, just try and keep your horizons level. And it just makes a difference to your image um, in the long run. So, there we go. Um, yeah, so, RX10, you know, 
three years down the line almost, and it's still a beast. Using the, R, uh, the RX-10 Mark IV and the A7R4, and even the A9, I don't feel like the RX-10 Mark IV is three years old almost, in the technology-wise. It seems to perform so well. The fact that they've managed to squeeze another firmware update out of it um, to increase the, uh, the speed of the AF and also the Animal AF and all that sort of stuff is incredible. So just proves the point that, you know, that camera was a really, really good um, build. And that's probably why we haven't seen a Mark V yet is because it was actually so capable they probably thought, well, might as well get another year out of it. So, yeah, hopefully they will bring something else out. Um, it'll be very interesting when they do. So, yeah, anyway, looking forward to that moment. Um, anyway, guys, um, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Any comments below would be great. Obviously, your thoughts on the RX-10 Mark IV or any other cameras that the Sony um, make. And obviously the autofocus systems and everything like that. So uh, don't forget to click the little, little uh, notification bell as well. I shall see you soon.